Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back to the show. We are here today with our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday, where we are going to dive into the subject of how to keep the weight off for the holidays. So I'm going to give you some really simple techniques that's going to allow you to truly enjoy the holidays and being around family and maybe even some indulgences while also not setting yourself up for failure when January 1st comes. So we've all heard the statistics before, right? The average weight gain is somewhere from 6 to 11 pounds from Thanksgiving, which just occurred last week, all the way through January 1st. And when you think about it, it it makes sense too, right? Because this is the time of the year that we're indulging a little bit more, right? That we're allowing ourselves to have a little bit more alcohol or a little bit more sweets or treats or foods that we wouldn't always eat or certainly not to the same extent. So there's no doubt about that because a lot of times we have the mindset, well, we're just going to take it off January 1st. The only issue I have with that, because I totally get it, I understand it, I've been in this industry for uh, a couple decades now, and, and it's all true. Like All of that's true. You can definitely take it off. But let's say that you're going into the holidays right now, and you already want to lose 15 pounds, or you already want to lose 20 pounds, or your body's not as healthy as it should be, and you're feeling a little groggy, you're feeling a little, I don't know, your brain fog, your body's in a little bit inflamed, you're not you should be. What you don't want to do is compound that and make it more difficult for when you get to January 1st. So if you go from needing to lose 20 pounds to 30 pounds, that's a big difference, right? That's a big difference. And if you're already feeling inflamed and tired and run down, and then you do all this to your body over the next month or so, well, it's, again, it's going to be that much more challenging to take it off for the new year. So what I want to say is this, let's not add the extra right now. But at the same time, I really think that we should be able to enjoy ourselves. Like, I'm not one of those health proponents that says that you need to sacrifice everything right now in order to live a little bit longer or to uh, feel a little bit better or to be able to lose the weight. I'm not that person. In my own life, I don't do that, so I certainly would not tell you to do that. What I've always recommended that if you're not well, meaning that if you have a specific autoimmune issue, if you have um, uh, fatigue, brain fog, thyroid, skin issues, headaches, you name it. Like if you have any of those issues, digestive dysfunction, you want to correct those. You want to correct those before you start to indulge a little bit more. And the reason is that you just have to get rid of it because life is so much better. Take it from me. Life is so much better when you're not dealing with disease in your body. It just is. You can enjoy. I'm thankful every single day that I have the energy I have now because at one point, I had Addison's disease, I had POTS, I had fibromyalgia, I had insomnia, I had type 2 diabetes, I had the early stages of juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. So you don't want those things, right? You don't want those. And sure, I had more than most candida overgrowth, SIBO, H. pylori. You, you don't want all of those things. But the nice thing is you can heal. When you do heal, you have the perspective that I don't want to go back, but at the same time, I still want to enjoy my life. So I'll have one or two flex meals a week. Some people call them cheat meals. Call them whatever you want. It's just semantics, right? But the truth is that I enjoy food and I enjoy foods that are not health foods as well. So I can still have those things as long as I maintain balance. A lot of people love to talk about moderation. Let me share this with you. This is one of today's tips. Moderation does not get you or keep you healthy at any step of the equation. Moderation over the holidays causes people to gain six to 10 plus pounds. And here's why. Moderation might just be, oh, a couple cocktails every night or so. Moderation, I'm not drinking a bottle. I'm not drinking four or five. I'm just drinking a couple, right? Every single night or most nights of the week. And I'm not eating a whole case of cookies. I'm just having a couple. Or at work, people bringing in more desserts, things like that. Well, I'm just going to have a couple bites. That's moderation. 
But if you're doing things more days than not, which is four days a week, right? If you're doing things more days than not that are inflaming your body, that are causing blood sugar dysregulation, that are uh, forcing the liver to not be able to do its full job with more alcohol, et cetera, that's not moderation. That is not. That is because moderation is, we're saying a little bit every single day. Well, that's just not going to allow your body to maintain balance. So I never talk about moderation because nobody can define what moderation is, right? Like nobody can define that because nobody really knows. It's moderation for one person looks like this, moderation for another looks like this. So what I say is balance. What kicks your body out of balance? That's what it's all about. That's what people are missing, right? So it's like uh, carbs are bad. Well, says who? Says who? I know many people that can eat two, 300, 400 grams of carbs a day, no issues at all. Their body's super healthy. And when they don't, they feel worse. Why? Well, their body's more metabolically active. They need the carbs. They need 50 to 100 grams of carbs per meal. They do that three or four times a day. That allows them to repair and rebuild the body. They're more of an ectomorph. They're more active. They might be an athlete. Who knows, right? Some people are good at 150. Some people are good at 50 to 70 carbs per day. Why? It's not moderation. It's balance for them, right? So they're missing balance. I mean, that is truly, when we talk about, I've, I've talked about it before, but I know the equilibrium nutrition is now equal life, but the way that equilibrium nutrition or even equal life, which is essentially equilibrium, got its name is from traditional naturopathy. Traditional naturopathic, traditional naturopathic doctors uh, called natural hygienists knew that the way to rebalance the body is to look at what are called to look at what's called dynamic equilibrium. And what that means is that the body's always in a state of flux. Blood sugar is up and down, pH is up and down, electrolytes are up and down, like you know, stress hormones are up and down. The body is always trying to maintain homeostasis. Another name for homeostasis is just equilibrium. And so that's what you're striving for. So if you drink one drink, and that's all it takes for you, one alcoholic drink, and you feel groggy the next day, your histamine levels are up, your estrogen levels are up, that is not moderation. You are imbalanced. Now, some people can definitely have a couple drinks a week and they have no issues. They really don't, right? Reactive oxygen species don't increase. Oxidative stress doesn't increase. Their parasympathetic nervous system actually turns on a little bit more. Okay, for them, less of an issue, right? So, Balance, not moderation, balance for them is two, three drinks a week, okay? A couple nights a week. For some people, it's no alcohol at all. So we have to understand that it truly is not about moderation, it's about balance. Now, how can we look at this in terms of the holidays? Well, so a lot of people don't want to look at this, but if your weight matters to you, okay? And again, I talk about weight from a health standpoint, never a vanity standpoint. Nobody can say that the perfect body looks like this, this, or this, right? Some people might feel their subjective view is the ectomorph. Some people feel their subjective view is the mesomorph. Some people feel their subjective view is the endomorph, right? The vata, the pitta, and the kapha. Totally subjective. So when I'm talking about weight, I'm talking about health. I'm talking about a healthy BMI. I'm talking about a healthy body fat percentage. If you've never heard about BMI before and what yours should be, or a body fat percentage and, and waist hip ratio, I will link up previous or I'll link up, yeah, previous podcasts I've done. Today's podcast is at stephencabral.com forward slash one seven six two. I'm going to link up the podcast on BMI, body fat percentage, waist hip ratio, absolutely crucial. But I'm also going to link up um, a, a few topics that I'll be talking about in just a moment. So here's what I want you to know. I call it the five-pound rule. It's my five-pound rule. I've been using it with clients for, well, 20-plus years. And the reason I said it was this. I'm not going to get upset at you. And if you're a personal trainer out there, if you're a nutritionist out there, once your client has met their goal, there should be a buffer. Because if you are attached to the scale, you're going to have good days and bad days. Work with a lot of women in our practice. About a week before their menstrual cycle begins, day one of menstruation, that week before, they could fluctuate anywhere from three to five pounds of their body weight. No problem at all. They're just, they're actually retaining more water. Now, if you didn't know that, you might think that you're gaining body fat that week and you're like, what am I doing differently? I'm exercising the same. I'm eating the same. I do my intermittent fasting. Why am I gaining weight? Well, it's hormones. It's not body fat. Your hormones are causing you to retain more water. So that's why we can't be fixated on the scale, okay? 
that, and it's really, really important because your body is about two thirds water. So if you look at that and you weigh 150 pounds, well, three pounds a day is just 2% fluctuation in water, right? Three pounds a day is just 2% fluctuation. You're a little dehydrated that morning. You're a little bit more swollen that morning. Like things happen. You went out to dinner the night before, you ate good food, but it was super high in sodium, table salts, sodium chloride. What happened? Well, your body retained more water. Okay, you get up, you do a nice smoothie, it has a little bit of a diuretic effect, you get rid of that, right? You urinate more. Okay, so that's temporary. But the, the scale, and again, I work with a lot of people with disordered eating and, and various issues, and the scale isn't right for them. I get it, I understand that. But for a lot of people, it is beneficial. And here's why. If you look at your weight, Let's just even say Monday and Fridays. I've talked about that in the podcast before. Why you need to do not every day, but a Monday, Friday weigh-in. If you've never heard why I recommend Monday, Monday Fridays, I'm going to link up that podcast as well. Crucial. Um, it's it's. I think it's a healthy balance. You don't have to weigh yourself every day of the week. Mondays and Fridays are two great days to do it. Okay. So it allows you though to give yourself five pounds. So it's why I tell people, get to your healthy weight and then give yourself a five pound buffer, which just means this. If you start to see your weight creep up, up your two more, let's say you weigh again, 150 pounds, 180 pounds, it doesn't matter. You get to 152, 182. Okay, starting to gain a little bit of weight. Let me just, let me watch what's going on. This isn't just one day. This is over a period of a couple of weeks. And then you see it at 183 and a half, 184. You say, whoa, I'm almost at my five pound threshold, my five pound buffer. Okay. At this point, you're doing something over the last month that's causing you to gain weight. Look, again, it's all about self-awareness. Don't judge yourself. It's not about judging. The five pounds is easy to take off. We'll talk about that in just a second. But what is it? Well, you started to drink some more alcohol, right? You might have fall, fallen for the media folklore of there's no alcohol, there's no sugar in alcohol, which is, again, beyond imagination. It's just semantics. It's sugar alcohol, right? There's certainly carbs and sugar in it. Uh, it, it certainly affects your body, that's for sure. There's typically a, a rise in blood sugar and a subsequent fall into hypoglycemia, which affects your mood and your hormones, et cetera. Um, or you might have eaten a little bit more treats, or you might have been eating a little bit later, or like any different these things, right? So you just look, you're like, okay, yeah, this is, this is the variable that changed. Let me stop that until I get back to my normal body weight. Having the five pound rule allows you to understand that you can still enjoy yourself and you might even gain a little bit of weight, but it's okay. It's okay. It's not a big deal to gain a couple pounds. Don't beat yourself up about it. If the weight is sustained weight gain, look, is it hormonal? Is it something you do in dietary? Is it the alcohol? Like, what is it, right? Is it just excess calories? Maybe you just start to eat more. Like, who knows, right? But we can figure that out. There's always a variable that created the change. So we can look at that and just you say, when I start to get to that five pounds, okay, now's the time I need to take it off. And that's what we can look at now. So what will happen during the holidays? It will happen for a lot of people. It might happen over two weeks instead of a month because there's more opportunities to cheat. And I know during this lockdown period of time, people aren't going to be having as many large gather, uh, gatherings. There's not going to be as many work-based parties, friend parties, but you're still going to have family gatherings most likely. You still might indulge with your favorite holiday treats. And believe me, there'll still be opportunities. So what I I want you to just say is this, let me use three easy things that I can do in order to catch that weight before it creeps up. Because if you just gain weight for a couple days, no big deal if it comes right back off. Honestly, you don't need to do anything special. You really don't. You just go, need to go back to normal and healthy eating. And you can check out my shows like the foundation of all diets and all that for good whole food, clean eating. But Let's say that it is creeping up. Okay, here's what we can do. We need to implement, if you haven't started doing intermittent fasting, now now is a good time to do it. And you can simply say, I'm going to pick 12 hours. You, you honestly choose the 12 that you want. You'll get more benefits if you start to fast by 6 p.m. at night and you stop the fast at either 6 or 8 o'clock or so in the morning. That's an easy 12 to 14 hours. Honestly, that's going to allow for that cleanup. Hopefully, you tuned into yesterday's podcast. Even if you're not a coffee drinker, um, you can see how tea and decaf can give you benefits as well. Well, definitely tune into yesterday's podcast because um, there are just there's so many tricks that you can use that aren't even tricks. They're just natural ways to help your body burn more body fat and honestly stay healthier. It's all about staying healthy. It's about if you are a healthy individual, you're not going to be overweight. It's how it works. If you are overweight, your body's not healthy. It's there. It, they can't. They they don't coexist. Being overweight, high BMI 
and health, they don't coexist. They, they honestly don't. Even I would say, and I was in that category, even if you have a lower body fat percentage and maybe more muscle and all that, like I was trying to do in my earlier 20s, mid 20s, um, it's still not healthy. It's honestly not. Like you don't see a lot of bodybuilders living into their 80s. It's just, it, sometimes it happens. There's no doubt about it. You know, that great genetics account for a lot as well. But anyway, just try to maintain an overall healthy body. That's what it's all about. And yes, body fat percentage does matter. And waist hip ratio probably matters as much as anything. Honestly, that's the truth because there's a lot of endomorphs who will be at the very top of their BMI. And for them, that's lean and good. That, then that's great for them. But waist hip ratio matters a lot as well. Okay, so what are the three things you can do? Intermittent fasting is one of them. Just give your body time to clean house after the alcohol, after the indulgences in food, right? The pastries, the treats, the sweets. Now, the next one is a one-day diet reset a week. So I did a podcast a number of years ago called basically the 20, the, uh, the 24 hour diet reset or one day diet reset. I'm just going to link it up below. It's again, some names are all about semantics. What that matters is the knowledge of you being able to implement this. It's actually very simple. And I got the idea from what my clients were doing that told me that was working for them. Because remember, I am always the student. I am always learning. And yes, I develop protocols and I create all these different things, but I'm like, oh, well, that's working for you. Why might it be working? Could it be easier than fasting for a full day, right? Because some people, they want to eat food. They want to have some smoothies, some beverages, things like that. So the one-day diet reset is actually super simple. So I'm going to link up the podcast for it. But essentially what you're doing is, one, um, it's a low-calorie, higher amino acid protein with detox factor shake in the morning. It's just the daily nutritional support, one shake in the morning, one scoop, right? And that's your breakfast. And then one at uh, lunch, then an optional one mid-afternoon, and then you're having a normal dinner at night. Now, here's the big caveat with that, that a lot of people, um, you really have to understand is that you're going from dinner the night before to dinner the next night. So it's 24-hour, it's a liquid fast, giving you the detox based um, cofactors that help to detox the body at a faster rate. Because again, clinically proven, you're giving your liver the sulfur that it needs and the antioxidants and vitamins that it needs as well. But I won't go into that again. If you want to learn more, there's a whole podcast. The podcast is free. And so what do I want you to know about that? Your dinner cannot make up you for your breakfast and lunch calories. That's important. Okay. So you need to have a, a normal dinner that you would typically have, but you, maybe you're a little bit extra hungry. Now you shouldn't, if you do the shakes during the day, cause there's enough protein, you're going to be getting about what? 22 and a half grams of protein, um, through those shakes throughout the day. You'll have gotten all your vitamins and minerals. So your body's not going to be craving those micronutrients and you're going to be getting the fiber. Plus you're going to be getting 20 ounces of fluid with each shake. So you're going to be getting 60 ounces of fluid. Uh, what is that? About eight glasses of water or so already before that. So there are huge benefits to it, but you can have a salad. If you want, you can kind of front load that meal or have extra veggies at the meal. So basically, um, high, um, nutrient density, low caloric at that dinner. If you want a little bit extra veggies like broccoli or salad, you could do that, but don't overeat on calories. Then you, know, then you just wake up the next day and you go back to your normal eating. That's been a huge game changer for people in my practice to do once a week um, in their life or just during the holidays. Okay. So that's one that's going to be a big, big benefit to many, many people. And the last one is a, you know, if you're part of this podcast, you probably know that we do quarterly detoxes, uh, functional medicine detoxes, of course. And we do our next one on January 11th. We come together literally as a global health community, thousands of people around the world, all doing their detox together, 7, 14 or 21 day. We're cheering each other on at cabralsupportgroup.com. That's a free uh, Facebook group uh, where we provide uh, free help and support for people's mission of getting healthy. But many people do one five or seven day detox between Thanksgiving and the January 11th, our next detox. And that's for you to decide. But if you see that five pounds creep on and you see even more, you need to get that off your body. You really do. You just don't want to start with excess January 1st. You want to start at your starting line. You don't want to back up 20 yards. You really don't. And again, like the truth is, it's not just about the weight. 
It's about your health. You're, if you are gaining weight that rapidly, your body's inflamed. It's, there's no doubt about it. It's one and the same. Inflammation and weight gain. Weight gain and inflammation. That's why I say an overweight body is inflamed. It, by its very nature, that adipose tissue is causing inflammation. It's causing excess estrogen. It can cause excess cortisol. It's not a good thing, right? And there's most likely thyroid dysregulation as well. So, of course, I always recommend the seven day, right? If you've never done a detox before, then in January, you're going to do the 21 day. There's no doubt about it. It can be absolutely life changing. But most people will maintain with a seven day each quarter, every 12 weeks. Now, if you wanted to do a five day, which some people like to do, again, I always recommend the seven, never, never cut it short by two days. But let's say that you had to because you have events every weekend. I get it. And don't let that stop you from doing your best, right? Never let what you can't do stop you from what you can. So if you have an event on Saturday night, well, you could do a Sunday through Friday, or you could do a uh, Monday through Friday, and that's five full days. You'll still get a ton of benefits from that functional medicine detox. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, we offer a free detox course as well. If you don't know what a functional medicine detox is, it is, for most people, the reason why I created it, and again, I'm not the one that invented a functional medicine detox, uh, but I think I helped simplify it and take it to the next level. Well, check out the free detox course. It's completely free. It's a couple hours of just free information that will be life-changing for most people that have not met their wellness, weight loss, or anti-aging goals. That is just at equa.life, E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash detox dash course. Again, completely free. Check it out. You'll know much more about it and why people are getting such great results from it. Um, and of course, you can look up the detox itself just at equa.life. So those are the things that I know will make the simplest and fastest change in your life. Follow that five pound rule. Understand that moderation is not the same as balance within your body. Look at doing a one day diet reset once a week. Uh, that, that's a game changer as well for resetting a couple pounds of weight gain and inflammation. And then if needed, pull out the heavy hitter, which is that five or seven day, uh, just the holidays is only five, always seven day besides that, because you need those extra two days of that holiday detox as well. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, you can always work with um, our, us over at Equi.Life. You can work with an integrative health practitioner. You can work with a naturopathic doctor. You can work with their functional medicine detoxes that they do. My job is to bring you the content, bring you the education, let you know that there is a simpler way to stay healthy. And uh, you can always choose from there. So hopefully this was helpful. We're going to link up a bunch more podcasts today at stephencabral.com forward slash 1762. Take care, everyone. And I will talk with you tomorrow with our Conversations with Cabral interview. Ever wonder what the best sauna, blue blockers, sleep trackers, wake lights, salt lamps, or other health gadgets are? Or what about the top non-toxic mattresses, sheets, soaps, bath products, toothpaste, and cookware? Or would you like to know the cleanest choices for hemp parts, meal delivery services, supplements, and much more? I personally curated, researched, and now created a resource page of all of my top picks that continues to grow each week. These are the exact products I use in my own life, with my family, in my private practice, and they're the ones I trust. To find out all of my up-to-date recommendations, and all the details, simply head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources.